sit down, take a chew and chew my money till we money to be key. Paul Paul in it, cool was quick was ain't talking. Money speak, all that bullshit, keep keep run the side, run the side, run the side. They got one in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they'll give you a 10. And West Virginia has one where they'll give you 20,000. Yeah. But West Virginia, bro, it has to be 50,000. Yeah. For real. And, and, and property. And property. Tax free property. Uh, I want a wife. <laughs> just, just hook me up with a family and a four bedroom house and then 50K a year, tax free. I'll move to West Virginia. Oh, yeah. If you lined me up with that situation, I'd move there too for a few years, figure it out. I think uh, Northwest Arkansas also has a program like that. Arkansas. Nothing good happens in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about right. Good thing about Arkansas is leaving it. Yeah. Same with like Mississippi. Mississippi. I mean, if Mississippi gets money, there's no way they're going to use it for something like that. <laughs> no. I've, I've driven through Mississippi multiple times in my life. Like going from Texas to Georgia, mm-hmm. it's it's just really damp. Oh yeah, my mom's from Mississippi. She's yeah. from Why Not Mississippi, and the whole state is just horrible. It's just yeah. so sad. It's just depression. It's the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. One time, I took a mega bus out to Mississippi, and I I went and a guy that was sitting next to me on the mega bus was just kind of freestyle rapping to himself, and then he slowly started rapping more about robbing me and describing me, and then robbing me and beating me up in Jackson. And I was like, uh, I was like 22, 22, 21 or 22. I was so fucking scared. I was like, oh, please don't fucking beat me up in Jackson. But the mega drops me off at like 3 a.m. in the middle of Jackson. There's people like yelling at me and laughing and being like, you shouldn't be here right now, man. You shouldn't be here right now. My cousins came and picked me up. And I was like, thank you God you guys are here. Thank God you guys are here. It was so scary. It was fun. Good times. Jackson, Mississippi. Dude, I'd be fucking scared too if a guy just started rapping about wanting to mug me on a bus going to Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Like, talk about a fish out of water situation. Uh, and I, I was just listening to him at first, kind of passively, like, oh, yeah, this guy's kind of singing, rapping to himself. And then he was describing my outfit and was like, black skinny jeans and J4s on. That iPhone's going to be on the floor, son. Like, just talking. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's talking about me right now. And, like, slowly, it, it, he was doing, he was probably over 30 minutes of rapping about beating me up and robbing me. Jesus Christ. You should have gone to Memphis. Yeah, for real. Well, I was visiting family in Jackson. Yeah. It's the last time I saw my grandma. She gave me her car when she died. That was pretty tight. Her car? Yeah, when I was like 23 or something, my grandma died. And what she, she gave drive? me. Um, oh, I can't remember. It, here's what's wild. She was not for money, right? She's a pretty working class woman. Uh, didn't have any retirement or anything like that. She hits a kid in her car. But the kid jumped in front of her car. And so she was able to sue the family and get a new car. It was like a Nissan Altima style car. When she died, she gave it to me. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so I was like, wow, this is interesting. Kind of my grandma's legacy. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I got that lawsuit car. Oh, yeah. She says, yeah, the kid died, but it was his fault. And I'm I'm traumatized from it. I need a new car. And it, 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 the kid's parents are like, I guess we have she to. Got that, she got that detailed on the dash, like a nice foot <laughs> dash and the Nissan. It's like that uh, deserved it. The date that she gets hit, that kid is carved into her dash. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah but I, yeah, you know what? Everyone's, every, you know, life is full of cycles. And I ended it with me. I sold it. Like, before, like the second I got it, I sold it because I was like, I don't need a car. I'll, I'll destroy it. I just had no faith that I wouldn't. And it was like, at the time, insurance would have cost me like over $100 a month. I was like working at Bolden Creek riding a scooter where it cost me like $100 a year for insurance. And I was like, I just cannot make up the deal. This is so worth to have just a scooter instead of a car. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's like that. Well, I watched that Pawn Star video you sent me. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the Vegas Pawn, like their pitch video, their demo. Oh, yeah. They're little devils. They're little devils, aren't they? Living off other people's credit. Yeah, I mean, I'll admit, like, I don't watch The Bachelor or Bachelorette. I don't watch Big Brother or Love Island. But, like, I've been fucking up this entire week, like, reruns of Pawn Stars and Forged in Fire and Swamp Swamp People. That's another Mm -hmm. big one I fuck with. Like, I I got box sets of it. Of Swamp People? Yeah. Do you hail from Swamp People? I don't I don't hail from there. But I, I do I I would salute their flag. 
Do you, <laughs> do you have swamp people in your family? No. Okay. No, my like my dad's side it's all New Yorkers and then my mom's side it's all Georgians. Nice. There's no swamps. But yeah, like I've I've been rewatching all those fucking episodes of Pawn Stars and I got some beef with the later with the later seasons, you know, the latest ones. First off, the old man is dead. Mm-hmm. And you you can definitely not not just him not being there anymore, but they they've gone in this really weird direction where they have Rick filling in all these fucking gaps. Like which one's Rick? He's the main bald guy. Okay. And I don't know. It's just like when it first came on, they had the little like trivia, like, Hey, you know, what's the, what's the most expensive sports item the, the shop has ever had and have like ABC like options and then uh-huh. got a commercial break and they would that tell you, fun. yeah, it, it was fun. It was a great family time, you know, cause we'd all, you know, place bets on what we thought it was. And then after the commercial break, it would tell us, well, they got rid of that in season 18, which is, which is the one I've been like kind of getting my, getting my, uh, feet wet in mm-hmm. recently and it's just like okay well first off where the fuck's my uh where's my quizzes you know made me feel smart when i got it right you like the interactive portion yeah now it's just rick going on to this even fake like it's e- it's even more fake than the pawn shop set they've made for them mm-hmm. to keep like recording in that's the thing is it's all just people they cast to come online and pretend to want to sell their stuff. They're not actually going to sell for that little. And for them, it's kind of just like a marketing campaign of the thing they actually plan on selling for way more. So this guy rolls up with like a fucking sarcophagus from Peru. And the guy's like, well, I can give you 500 for it. And the guy's like, this is a fucking sarcophagus from Peru. And he's like, yep, 500 is the best I can do. Look, man, I got to make a profit, you know, after commissions, uh, you know, I got to get this thing restored. The sarcophagus expert comes in. He's like, yeah, it's a priceless sarcophagus. He's like, yeah, 500 is about what we can do here. I've definitely seen more and more items come in where it's purely like, no, we're just we're just bringing this in because it's going to be good for ratings. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, no, this is actually from King Tut's like pyramid. This is Abraham Lincoln's cock ring. Yeah. Like it says like Jolly Roger or something. And it's Mm -hmm. like there's there's no way they're going to drop like a quarter million for that. Like they they just brought it on just to show it, yeah. And it's like nowadays Rick doesn't even try to negotiate. He's just like he's just, he'll just like show up, and he'll just be like yeah, I can't even make an offer on that. I don't know. He's like I I don't know. He's like I don't know if I could even come close to that. So I'm just not even going to offer. You I got a I got to call in my lion taxidermy expert. Yeah, I got a call. You know what? Can I, you want to know something wild, Robert? What? There are people on the internet who are, um, they are people that work at pawn shops and own pawn shops and stuff like that. And here's the thing. They're making their own little pawn stars, DIY style. Like there's one guy I see on the internet called the pawn guy. He's like a younger guy that owns a pawn shop. He's just doing, you know, and, 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 uh, so we've cut out the middleman. We don't have the market tested. We can go straight to the, hey, pawn man, show me what's going on at the pawn shop. You know, hey, live stream that bitch. You know, we, we've outdated. There's a reason that old guy's dead. His empire's crumbling. Okay, I don't, need a, I don't need a reality TV star producer to come in and tell me what a pawn shop should look like. I got some 26-year-old in Gary, Indiana with a 3D fucking camera. You know what I mean? One of those 360 cameras. Just doing his little pawn, telling a little pawn star story. Yeah, these are my fucking rare coins. Right on, man. Right the fuck on, man. Is he? But is is he trying to do? Is he trying to like? Is this is this twenty six year old trying to show you like the really cool shit, or is he like, hey, I'm live streaming right now. This guy's trying to sell his gold teeth to you know pay child support. Like Ooh. which which version of the pawn shop is he showing us? I I I I am going to his little TikTok. I'm going to find him on TikTok right now. So I don't know where, the, where the search functionality is. All right, the pawn guy, I think is his name. Is Pawn Talk a uh, confirmed? Sh- are we calling it just like a sub TikTok or a sub genre of TikTok when it's like book talk? I, I'm, talk? Yeah, I'm sure there's a Pawn Talk. Algorithm knows me well. It knows I want to see little videos, of antiques. It knows I want to see like videos, of chicken fights. Yeah. So this guy's called Pawn Dot Man, right? And uh, he he's very online. He's got you know damn near a quarter million followers. He's telling those little 
his little stories with gold chains. Oh, fake gold chain video stuff. Like, kind of has like an annoying voice like me. Let me show you. Here we go. I'll just play a little for you. Pawn man getting wealthier every day. Somebody recently asked me what I think my net worth is. And I was like, well, I'll tell you, three years ago it was negative, but now it's definitely not. I don't know. It's kind of hard to measure because it's all in stock. And they're like, what do you mean? The art of getting rich in my business is doing exactly this. Whenever you get a big deal walking in, let's say somebody walks in with 100 ounces of silver, take one ounce, put it away. It's all the rest. Somebody walks in. Did you hear that? Yeah. I, I looked him up on a. I'm not on my phone, but I'm I'm on a, another screen here on my computer. He he's like the skinny white guy. Yeah, he's living, he's laughing, he's loving. You know, he's just kind of doing. He's just hawking silver online. My man is Glenn Beckin. My dad, my man's doing the Glenn Beck approach. He yeah, buys silver and then he tells everyone, "Hey, silver's a great investment, and I'll sell you some." In fact, I got some silver you can invest in. That's I feel I feel thing. like he I feel like he got his pawn shop from another like online social media guy. And he's just like a product of kind of like that hustle generation because he's in a shop and it looks nice, but like he's got a fucking Dragon Ball Z t-shirt on. He's really skinny. He's very loud and just very like to the point. Like you want to make money? Like I got this silver and it's the price I tell you right now is the price you're going to pay. Da, 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 support small businesses like he just gives off the vibe that like he probably also like probably in gary indiana he owns the pawn shop and he's got a ring of vending machines around town as well that he goes collects quarters from probably his youtube video about that as well yeah like i like I, he knows jimmy a lot tibbs. about passive income he's a jimmy tibbs style character yeah which God, I mean, I think, jimmy tibbs back on the show i think the jimmy tibbs model is very in with like tiktok snapchat yeah. Like all those guys, Jimmy Tibbs. If he was on TikTok, he'd be huge. Just telling his little stories of his monies and how he gets his money, and telling his little jokes. Or he'd be immediately audited by the IRS. Oh yeah, he probably needs to be audited by the IRS. To be honest, or he but, he'd probably be canceled before it even starts. I mean, <laughs> I, love, I love Jimmy too, but like he said it himself, he likes to play the heel. Yeah, he does. He's good at it. He's a hero. He's an absolute hero. Uh, Boko Haram and ISIS definitely took advantage of Facebook Live. Yeah. They definitely used those tools to their advantage. Yeah. Definitely knew how to use Facebook Live to their advantage. It's wild how much, like, you know, straight up jihadist organizations can organize on Facebook make little events and stuff and make little videos. Yeah. But I post one video of me Jay and off to completion and I'm banned for life. <laughs> Not even that just, or no, this was on, this was over zoom, the comedy show where like <laughs> you brandished your gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did get, I did get Joe Toller banned from Twitch for life. Cause I pointed my gun at a camera and said, I'm going to kill you, Pat Dean. I'm going to shoot you in the head. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. That's I didn't know. Yeah. He would punish you for that. I thought that he was a comedy show. I'm not really going to kill Pat. If I was going to kill Pat Dean, I want to go around telling everybody I want to kill Pat Dean. Right. I would obviously pretend not to want to kill Pat Dean and then kill him. I would I mean, we're not killing people anyways, but the point is, 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 you know, yeah. You can't even point a gun at a camera and say you're going to shoot someone in the head anymore without, you know, America's Democrats taking that right from you. You said the, all, you, all you do when you're banning Twitch streams for me pointing the gun at the camera is you're taking responsible Twitch streams away from guys that were pointing the gun at the camera as a joke. That's all you're doing. You're not moving any danger there. You're just all fueling right? the fire for Elon to buy more social media platforms. Yeah. We need Elon to buy Twitch so he can point the gun at the camera and say, I'm going to kill people. <laughs> Elon to buy Twitch so I have he, he, to point my gun at Elon the camera. Elon buys again. Twitch so he can point his fucking like, flamethrower and be like, I'm going to kill you. What if I pulled a gun out of the drawer right here and pointed it at the camera right now? Would you like that or do you not think that's funny? Well, I mean, we don't post the video, so... Yeah, I, I didn't know Twitch had a rule against guns. It wasn't like an illegal gun or anything. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, we all we all learned that day. Like, yeah, you can get banned from Twitch. Yeah, really quickly too. Yeah, moments. Were you on that? Were you on that uh, call? No, but 
I did see a screen recording of it. Like you were just like walking around, and then all of a sudden, like it just there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a different time, man. It was early COVID. Everything. My the, my favorite thing I did was when Comedy Wham had us do had me do like a a, a Zoom show for him, and I was like out to yeah. dinner, and so I was like in the little Zoom room waiting to go like take the screen, and I was just eating dinner for everyone. And then it was my turn. I just walked outside. And it was like I'm so sorry. Give me a second. Oh my god, give me a second. And then I had someone hold the camera and strip down to the underwear where I was wearing this like thong where like my penis was covered by like a plushy banana. Yeah. And then I was like, I can't remember what scene I was planning. And then just stood there like almost naked for like a good like minute and a half. It was like, please take please take the camera back. And they were like, that was JT Kelly. <laughs> and then I just went back to dinner. It was a great night. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to explain it in the interview. We did. Oh yeah. She bring that up. Yeah. She brought it up and she, she brought it up jokingly, but I, I could tell she was genuinely concerned. Like she was, she thought we might do something crazy on screen again during that interview. You know what? We should have. We, we we instilled fear in her. The funniest person in Austin this year is an audience voting component where the audience votes to who goes next. Like in the lineup or like next as in like the next round? Next round. Okay. And so I'm thinking about just writing vote for JT on my tummy and on my back and then taking off my shirt during my set. And so they remember vote for JT. Have you have you done your uh, did like you you're registered and like you're yeah I w- I wasn't I wasn't on until the other day I sent an email in because I was like hey I applied a while ago and I I think I fell through the cracks and so they're like oh here you go you can be on on the eighth and I was like oh shit okay now I have to come up with three to five minutes and I've not even thought about it but I'm thinking something where I took off my shirt so I can write vote for JT on my tummy and back. I don't honestly like I think I think you need I think just look back at all of your old sets all your jokes and like just put put together the greatest hits like five minutes I I don't know Robert I know. I'm taking off my shirt where it says vote for JT remember, the, remember the last funniest person in Austin you competed in and you said the R word and I don't think I did yeah you did <laughs> I'm not. I watched. I, I watched the set, man. You were I like, think I got yeah, I didn't even, no. You were like, I didn't even get you. I, so I, I remember like two or three years ago, or two or three. It was sorry because it it didn't happen the past two years, but like the yeah, two it's or like three, 2018 or 2019. Yeah, I think for the 2018 or the I think it was the 2018 one. You you were an alternate. Mm-hmm. And there's a voting component, and like enough people voted, like no, like he should go to the next round. So that was did. a few years ago, yeah. And yeah. the one most recently where I got alternate, I did not win that. Yeah, because you you said the R word in one of your jokes, and you I, had to like spin I, it back, but no one was gonna take that. Hang on, the set went over really well. I watched that video, and like I even cringed at it. I don't think no. you're remembering it correctly. It's on my Instagram. It's a good video. Anyways, I my you don't, you don't think that's a good set? No, you you've had much better. My my advice is like I think I think that one we recorded at Buzzmill has some like really good material of yours. Mm-hmm. Like your like with your dad, the motorcycle. I don't know if you'd be able to like chop down the death in jail story to five minutes though. But like that I would say that's you know that's like that's the, probably my best bit, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. But, I'm gonna ask them. Just give me fifteen. <laughs> Can you give me fifteen? Because like one of my jokes is a really long story, and like yeah. you can't really just like chop it down to the highlights. Like you, you really got to get the whole full story. And I don't want to adjust the story. Kind of want to do a little material up top. <laughs> I was gonna, I want to do a little material up top and do the story. Yeah. Like, just give me like twenty, twenty-five. You know, just make it a feature set. Let me feature up top. Yeah. Let me feature up top, and then we close it out so everyone remembers my name too. I mean, you could you, you could write "Vote JT Kelly" on your forehead. You think so? Yeah, and just just don't acknowledge it at all, or like put it on like kind of like your forearm, so like as you're holding the mic, they'll see it. 
I just think there's going to be people that bring a bunch of friends, you know? And so it's not really going to matter. What yeah, I so do. you just got to bring your Twitter following. Oh, yeah, my very engaged Twitter following. They're pretty engaged. I don't think so. I don't think You're I not- get a lot of engagement on Twitter. What about TikTok? And they get more engagement on TikTok. Yeah, they're fresher. I mean, like, that's... Instagram following that, pretty good, too. That goes worldwide, right? Do they so? Do they have to be in the audience to vote? I would imagine. Yeah, I think it's like they give you a piece of paper when you get there. Okay. I just know it's a vod audience voting is how you get next. I'm like, oh, that's probably not going to happen for old JT. Not in like a sad way, you know. I don't know, dude. Because you're, I'll say this about your comedy. Like, I think, I think that it's it's not. It's more like like you're it's truly like alternative. I would say I'm polarizing. Either you're like, yeah. oh, this is really good, or you're like, I can't stand this cringe. Like this is so cringe, I can't stand it. And like what what I'll say is that I think more audience members like it than like Inshallah. I hope so. I think uh, I think I'm gonna retire from comedy at the age of like forty five. After I put out two albums, but one like really one crass like for comedy. Yeah, one that's like really crass and really fucked up, and then one that's like fully Christian. You know what I mean? And yeah, call it good and evil. There, it's, there's an actual cool label. Well, there, there's an actual label that like their niche is clean comedy specials. Really? Can we get me on them if I come up with an hour of clean comedy? I feel like my death story can be clean if I. Change the way I say it. Maybe I I just I would need to do more research on them, but like they 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 shoot most of them up in Utah, so I think they're like I think they're based out of Utah, and they might be Mormon. So I think even I, think, I could be Mormon. <laughs> well, I just think even the story like I pretended to be deaf to like shoplift. They'd be like, no, that's not clean. Like that's that's a bad story. Yeah. Eh, well, yeah, I'm not going to disagree with that statement. <laughs> I'm not saying I did a good thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know, you know. I do I do I'll, like that I'll, idea, though. It's like... I am interested in joining whatever religion will get me a special. I would go Mormon for that. If Mormons are like, hey, be Mormon, we'll fucking give you a, a fucking comedy special. I'd be like, okay, I'm fucking Mormon as shit, dude. Would you join Boko Haram? For a special? Uh, we don't fuck with Boko Haram. That's one I of our two it. stances. Hey, hey, I knew it. Yeah, Boko Haram's the line of the sand for me, and ISIS, obviously. Fuck so ISIS, you, you won't, real. you won't do any. So you wouldn't convert for. No. You wouldn't convert to anything for a special. I. It's close though. Yeah. It's close. It's, yeah, it's close. You know, for freedom river to sea and fuck ISIS and Boko, everything else, I'm negotiable on. Huh? I'm negotiable on pretty much anything. Yeah. Even Orthodox Jew. I could be Orthodox Jewish, yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Oh, my God. I like rules, you know? I'm a follower, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, I would would love Mennonite. I want to be, like, Amish or Mennonite. I want it to be something a little spicier, though, like FLDS, but, like, one of the FLDSs where you're married adults instead of children. Because I feel like that's the... When I I hear about FLDS, it's like, man, you're only fucking up by marrying kids, man. Just marry adults. and Then you're kind of living the dream, you know? Oh, also don't have kids. That sounds horrible. What I'm talking about is I am in a community where I'm rich and everyone has to do what I say. And um, that's FLDS. Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. It's a cult of the fundamentalist Mormon denomination. I can do that. Members practice polygamy. Yeah. Okay. I I can do that. I can do that. I can do... um, is Orthodox Jewish people the ones that wear like the black cowboy outfits, like full on cowboy jacket to the knees? Yeah, those those I are could the do ones that. that practice the more you could say like traditional old school. Yeah. Like, uh, I, what I fuck oh, with that fit heavy. I go with them for sure. What about the what about like the Remnant Church? Did you see who's, that HBO doc? Who's the Remnant Church? It was this church started by uh, like a southern lady, like back in the, I think it was like 1999. 
but she had this huge following from the eighties on because she had Are they in Tennessee? Yeah, they're in Brentwood. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. But they she had that book The Way Down. Yeah, I could do that. Lost the prayer. Mm Mm-hmm. I could do that religion. I could do any religion. Any religion where the rules are clear and you know how to be in charge, I would do it. I think we could get a special with them. Uh, let's do it, man. Oh, my God. I I'll, I roll up there. I got my hair slicked back. I bleached it blonde. You know, I got all my tattoos removed. I'll remove them. I don't need them. That's the old me, man. That's the old me. That's not me anymore. I got them removed, man. Come That's on. old me. That's the old me. Come on. Come on. I'm in the temple. I'm doing the crazy motions. I'm doing the Mormon witchcraft that they're doing. You know, I'm, talking, I'm making oaths. I'm making blood oaths. All right. I'm talking about blood atonement. I'm foaming at the mouth. I'm wearing clean robes. I got my magic underwear on. I'm learning how to shadow box in the temple with my priest, my came out Kizadek priesthood. You know what I mean? I could do it. Would you go I to an apostle church? Oh, I, I would do snake do snakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'd live in Appalachia and hold the would you, would you do your special? I'd put in my mouth. Oh my God! I'd speak in full tongues. Hour. <laughs> a full hour. A full hour tongues. I, I'm man. That's half my. That's half my comedy anyway. Just let my eyes roll behind my head and the spirit come out. You know, just doing it. Let walking in the spirit, walking in faith. That would be a pretty good album cover, though. Walking if I'm holding two snakes. Yeah, it's just you on stage. Like you roll back your eyes and like just. Like holding two snakes, and it's just. I'll wear a fully white suit. Of JT Kelly's comedy. Mm-hmm. I'll wear a white suit. I, oh, I told you about how I can find online a few hundred dollar leather suit that you can get a knockoff of Eddie Murphy's suit from Raw. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Would love to get that and wear it in the middle of summer in Texas for a comedy show. And it, but it's the same color, right? Like the red and black. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Couldn't get it in all white. Oh, I bet I can get it in all white. An all white leather suit would be incredible. Yeah. But it's it's still like the same same stitching as Eddie's. That'd be just nice. a lot cheaper in all white. God, I'd like an all white leather suit. And then you you, you keep it shadow on, box. No, you get the big gold cross chain. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's your that's your preacher's uniform. Man. I wish I had a white tuxedo I could wear. Dude, tuxedos are played out. A, a, a white tuxedo with an airbrush portrait on the back would be nice. I'm going to Google how much a white tuxedo is. And then I just go to like the market and have someone airbrush on the back. Yeah, 500 bucks for a tuxedo. A white tuxedo. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're gone. It'd be a one for $278. Extra slim ivory tuxedo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looking like I'm a major D. Is it a major D or a major D? I think that I think it's called a major D. Absolute major D. You like Bria tacos? The tacos that you dip back in the sauce that you cooked them in? No. Oh, I love those bad boys. Those guys are wild. Oh my gosh. Absolutely incredible. Ah. <sighs> You a truck flag guy? If you had a truck, would you put a good flag on the back? I don't know. I knew some truck flag guys back in high school, and I don't know. I would not be a truck flag guy, even if it was just a flag that it was just the American flag or the Texas flag. Like, I would like to get the. If I seen a flag, a picture of a flag where it's like the Blue Lives Matter flag, except there's like a metal fist ripped into the side, and there's just a Chihuahua looking at the cross, and I was like, I would put that flag on the truck, absolutely. Dude, I, I had so th- there's this one guy that went to my high school, Jake, and he had a he had an F one fifty with a flag in the back. Cool. But senior year, he had the uh, Confederate flag on it. And like, Ooh, yeah, bad look. yeah, pretty bad look because he would park it in front of the school and he wouldn't even take the flag down. And so he got mul- he, like he got multiple like trips to the office, talked to the principal like, hey, you really can't have that. And this was before like a lot of those statues got taken down and everyone was on board with like, you know, fuck this. Like we- we're not behind the heritage, not hate anymore. Back when there was still a street called Robert E. Lee in Austin. Yeah. Now it's like Aziz Morton. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> pretty cool. But anyway, so like they, so he he got away with it for like a few weeks, but then they, I think I think what happened ultimately was another another student's parents, and they were black, said no, like he needs to take that down, or like we're gonna sue the school board, and so right. he finally replaced it, but he put a "Don't Tread on Me" flag instead, and I was just like, dude, was, makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I remembered a funny story last night. Yeah. Can I tell it to you? Go for it. So this is not an anti Chris Castles podcast, believe it or not. <laughs> this is this is this is not a, <laughs> who said this, we were and who said we weren't. This is not a anti Chris Castle story. This is I just think a just you, funny story. I, I think you just saying that makes this an anti Chris Castles. This is a pro well, I like Chris Castles. I do. Um, okay. but uh He's booked some shitty shows, right? He's booked, and you know, everyone books shitty shows. It's a part of living. I've done book shitty shows. I've done shitty shows. That's that's comedy, right? That's you know, we're not, you know, not even the best comedians can book shows that you're like, oof. And sometimes the worst comedians book shows that you're like, yeah, you know, that's just life. Yeah. Years ago, and Castles had booked me on a show where we met. So like, he has booked me at actual colleges before. And so when he asked me, hey, would you, do you want to perform at a college in San Marcos? I was like, absolutely, right? And for those of you who don't know, for comedians, working colleges is great. You make tons of money. It's a very engaged audience that wants to see you. You know, it's, it's kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to doing stand-up. It's, it's the best you can be doing, in my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people disagree. Maybe arenas is better. I wouldn't know. But like doing colleges is dope. So someone telling you, hey, I can get you on a college show, it's like, wow, yes, I'll do it. He, he tells me, we're going to do a college show in San Marcos. And I was like, let's fucking go. I'm so high. This is what, like 2014 or something? Yeah. And um, I, what was that? I, I think I've heard this story before, but go ahead. Because it, it, it's pretty good. Where, like, the, a few days before, he's like, dude, I just did the first college show down there. It's great. We're doing another one. And I'm like, is it in the same place? And he's like, well, yeah, so it's like student housing. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not really like a college show, college show. But at the time, I lived in an apartment that had like a like an event area. And so I'm like, maybe it's something like that, right? Like, I've done, you know, how many times have you been to shows where it's like the uh, a bar inside a hotel you book out and stuff like that. So I'm yeah. like, you never know. It could be dope. Um but it's not even close to campus. It's like just in San Marcos and it's an apartment complex and there's no like a vent room. There's a leasing office right next to a pool. And so there's, there, I, we show up and it looks, I was like, so that's when I realized like, okay, so we're doing a poolside show in an apartment complex in the fucking daytime. That's what we're doing. Yeah. And there's like a bunch of kids playing in the pool and then they, they're setting up chairs towards like the PA system that Castles have brought. And it's like, oh my God, like, it's like all so clear. Like this isn't like a college show. This is like a, a, a thing that you worked out with an apartment leasing company. Like what the fuck? And so, the only people sitting in the chairs are, is this older couple that doesn't speak a lick of English. They don't know any English at all. And then I go into the leasing office and they're like, hey, we set you guys up with a green room. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I go into the green room. It's just a leasing office, leasing agent's office. And there's like a bunch of bowls of candy everywhere. And I just go to town. I eat so much candy. I eat it until my tummy hurts. And then I go and lay down by the pool and fall asleep until it's my set. And we're all doing like 40 minutes. And I go up and just do 40 minutes to two people that don't speak any English. And it was like, and there, while there's kids playing in the pool in the background, so I couldn't like cuss or anything. It was so just incredible it's like this is comedy i love stand-up i fucking hate comedy yeah no i it's funny you bring that one up because he did that one right i think it was right after or right before the one he did with me that that for the show where we met at and and i'll, I'll tell you i've heard i've heard plenty of comedians dread go, doing college shows because it it really depends on the college. I'm going to say that as a former like college mm -hmm. buyer for comedy and other buyers I've met, um, you know, because luckily for UT Dallas, they didn't give a shit. They're like, hey, as long as no one like files a complaint after the show, being like, hey, they that was really offensive, or like, 
as long as you don't piss anyone off directly and get in trouble, like you, there was no preset limitations really, except for the budget, you know, mm. um, like the, I think it was a couple years before I started the job. They had Donnell Rawlings and oh, that is he, he's the, he, he was the shorter guy on a Chappelle show. So there's, oh, okay. there's like Dave, Charlie Murphy, and then Donnell Rawlings. And his his stand up's pretty wild. Like when I when I was talking to my boss about that one, he's like, "Yeah, like that one got a little uncomfortable because like a, you know a lot of kids were laughing, but they didn't know if they really should be because he was mm-hmm. like you know he he says the n word in his set a lot. He's like, a black guy though, right? Yeah. Okay. No, he, he's totally <laughs> white. This was a white writer. <laughs> uh, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, I. I think they can say it, in my opinion. I, when a black person says that, even Jimmy Tibbs, Jimmy Tibbs is the only person I'm like, maybe you shouldn't say that. <laughs> you say it in a hateful way. I told him that. I said, you say it in a really hateful way because I make enough money to Kelly. <laughs> they, I, you, you dog. You dog, you. But yeah, like I, I remember he mentioned, he's like, yeah, and I got this other gig booked at Texas State. And I was like, oh, really? Like, are you going to do it on the quad or in the student union? Do they do they have like a bar on campus as well? He's like, no, it's actually at a at an apartment complex. I was like, oh, so it's in one of the dorms. He's like, no, it's an apartment complex. I was like, is it associated with the school at all? He's like, well, you know, it's it's going to be next to campus. And it's I was not just, even next to campus. I was like, no, nah. it was like an apartment that families live in, not like college yeah. students. You want to see a piece of art I bought, Robert? Sure. I'm an art buyer. It's a cool dog. The best I can do on that is twenty five dollars. Yeah, I, I spent I spent twenty bucks on it. I yeah. thought it was worth it. I love it. Oh, so you know how my dog died? Yeah, Squancho. Squancho, rest in peace, Squancho, forever a soldier. I'll miss you till the day I die. Beautiful dog, beautiful dog. I loved it. I loved her so much. Heartbreaking losing her. I was an absolute mess. But I did find the photo of her and I from a long time ago, and now it's on mm-hmm. my desk. I'm pulling it up to show it to you. It looks like I am a like one of those veterans that got back from Vietnam and lived on the streets. And I'm holding her like a gun. Oh, yeah. I look pretty fucking unhinged in that photo, huh? I mean, there's a lot of photos you look unhinged in. I know. I'm trying to look more and more hinged. I'm trying to get it together. That's my goal is to look hinged and, you know, look, I want someone to look at me and go, that guy's stable. That guy's a normal stable guy. So I I mentioned to you, I got a little, there's a little... a little, little story happened at the Whataburger last night. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, so... And I... I guess, let, let me set the stage, because living in Nashville, there there's only two Whataburgers that are open, and, like, they just opened this year. Mm-hmm. So, so they're new to the game. Yeah, everyone there's new to the game. Like, everyone's hyped for it. They're already talking about building five more in the city. Thank God. Yeah, because this... The one we go to from time to time when we just have that craving, it like usually the lines out the door, or like the drive through line circling the whole building twice. Like it, it gets fucking busy. But anyways, so last night I was we were just like, look, I gotta get that fucking chicken strip sandwich, and we we go there for dinner, and we're waiting in line, and it's we usually go in there because it's like a long drive. Anyways, so we're we're at the end of the line and I was already thinking like, dude, like I don't even know if this is gonna be worth it. Like I'm already looking up other restaurants to go to nearby that might be like quick, you know, in and out. But then the manager comes out from the back and is you know, the white Whataburger manager shirt. I think you got one from BK, right? Uh huh. Yeah. I got a blue one from BK. I used to wear it to court. Yeah, you you know the look. You know, it's the oh, pinstripe yeah. short sleeve shirt. They're nice. I like Very it. Very official. Yeah. So he comes out and just he, he's like he's like hey guys like just so you know that you know 
only nine of the 20 employees that were supposed to be working today actually showed up. So he's like, we're severely <laughs> understaffed. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Ten, 10 people said, nah. <laughs> Not today. No, eleven people. That's that's fucking. Nine awesome. out of twenty showed up, so it's mm. we're not even at half capacity. And like I and this this guy was sweating like beads, so like I could tell he was like busting his ass trying to make it work. He's like, but he you know he's just like he's like so just so you know like it's like please be patient. You know we understand if you want to go somewhere else, but like he's like that's just the situation. We're we're trying our best back here, and I think most people are like, oh okay, like. You know, Fair enough, right? Yeah, they're like, this is post COVID, and you know, people just don't want to work shitty, you know, hourly yeah. part time jobs in fast food that you know pay minimum wage. Oh. Not saying Whataburger does, but it's just you know, not a lot of people are taking up those offers to work work at those places. I'm googling how much Whataburger pays. Yeah. So, anyways, we're we're in the line for like another ten minutes, maybe. And it's, we're slowly moving along and we're at the, we're like two people behind the people in the front ordering at the register. And Katie looks out from the side where the the door is and the windows. And she sees 10 Whataburger employees, like just in a, in a whole mass, just walking, like just, we didn't even see like what car or truck they came from. They were just like all of a sudden appeared in the the parking lot and were walking up to the front door. Like reinforcements just got fucking dropped off from like a Black Hawk helicopter. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) They all just poured out of the back of a bus. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause when she saw it, they were just walking up and like putting on their hats. Like she didn't see where they came from. It's just like, now they're there. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys in the far back was like, oh shit, reinforcements are here. And like, there were some people in the line that were actually clapping. I was I like, I, that's exactly where my mind went. I bet there's yeah. clappers there. Like it's the end of Top Gun, these soft brain motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, th- well, there's like, there, there's this, uh, there's this, like this older couple in front of us. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, we, we, you know, we're traveling the country right now on, you know, like our, uh, like our, it's our like anniversary trip. And they were from, uh, I think they said like Arkansas or something. And they're like, we've never had Whataburger. And I could tell they were just like the nice kind of little church going people. Like Mm -hmm. this is probably the first time they've ever been to Tennessee, let alone like Nashville. They'd never been a bad motherfucker like Robert Carper. Yeah, they've never been inside of a Waffle House that's been like holed up. Oh, yeah. So anyways, like as the as these people are coming in, um, they're like, clear the runway, like, you know, like make room, clear the runway for them. It's like, glad you're here, you know, mm-hmm. and they just they just all immediately start like filing into the back and just like. Anyways, so, yeah, we see the reinforcements fucking come, which I have never seen that at any like store before, let alone like a fast food or even a target. They airdropped them from Texas. Yeah, like that's they, they might as well have just done that. Private jet right out there. We need you guys flipping burgers out there right now. Yeah, it's like, you know, get to, get to the DLs, get to the, uh, what do they call it? It's like the drop zone. But anyways, and then two minutes later, the the manager from earlier comes out again. He's like, sorry, guys. He's like, just a little update for y'all. Like, you know, he, he says the same thing. Only nine out of the 20 employees he had supposed to work today showed up. He's like, we just got more help, but this is their first time on the job. Like they've never worked a day in their life before, basically. Mm-hmm. And all the, all these people looked like they were high schoolers, like 15, 16 year olds. So mm-hmm. I was like, up, released from juvenile hall with the program with Whataburger. Yeah. I, I think that they all <laughs> adopted a bunch of foster kids. <laughs> they all live above the Whataburger. Like the, 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 the application for the, the foster care just came through and they're like, all right, well, here's your, here's your new uh, school outfits. You're going to, you're going to go to school now. You're homeschooled what, and the school of you. Yeah. yeah. But he was basically just like, yeah, like we we've got uh we've got the staff now. It's just half of them have never worked a day in their life before. And so it becomes training day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is fucking great. I was just like, I've never seen a Whataburger this like this staffed, period. Because it's usually like five motherfuckers in the back. Man, I used to love the Whataburger on South First Street and Barton Springs. I used to live right next there. Yeah. And late night, there'd always be like a cop sitting there, like, because it'd get rowdy. 
but the Whataburger employees were so mean and done with you. It was hilarious. I loved it. They had just had zero patience shouting at people. I was like, this is the best Whataburger in Texas. You guys are great. Yeah, they don't take no shit. I remember one time one of the cashiers working there was like, you notice how it's only black people working at night and this Whataburger is staffed by white people in the daytime? And I was like, yeah, I noticed that. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, you Anyways, to say something? Yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got I got exactly what he was saying. I, got, I was like, I just thought it was cool he would say that to a customer. I was like, you rule. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. He's telling he's telling me the real shit. And I just like, he said, what are you going to fire me? Come on, say it. Mm mm. Seen a lot of fights in that order burger. I've seen I've seen some fights at the one back home in Lakeway. The Lakeway Water Burger get rowdy. Yo, yeah, it's it's the only place open past like midnight at, out there, especially like the the story that comes to mind for me was after the the big football game against uh, our our rival Westlake senior year. Uh-huh. There's like a legitimate fight that broke out because there's a bunch of uh, Lake Travis kids like inside and like just cheering and just kind of coming off of their fucking like tailgate drinking from earlier in the day and like eating Whataburger and they were, they just kept chanting fuck West. Like, like just, it's, it's like, we already like the game's already over. Like we won, like, why are you still chanting like fuck West Lake and stuff? And like, there was like this, th- there's like this group of like maybe like six or eight West Lake kids that were just, I could tell it's like, they were already very like sad about losing the game and like, Oh, now we have to go home and you know, it's just, it's been a shitty night for them and they're just, they're just trying to eat. And one of them finally stands up and it's just like, it's like, you know, there is such a thing about being a sore winner. And this, this one guy who was standing from the, from the Lake Travis group, like he just immediately threw a chair at him. Like one of those wow. like, like brushed steel, like very lightweight. So like it, it had some fucking, uh, it had some speed behind it. You put a speed gun on that. You could probably think of it was like 75, 80. Oh, wow. You should pitch professionally. Yeah. yeah. And basically, like, just fucking fight broke out right there. Wow. I love seeing fights like that. I don't know. It's just part of my caveman brain. I definitely yeah. have Neanderthal in my blood. <laughs> I have a wide forehead. My knuckles drag across the ground. If I see people fighting, I just watch. You know what I could watch hours of? is street repair. Whenever they're putting asphalt in a place and they have to roll it and, like, dump that asphalt and pump it down and get it all straight. I love watching that. Oh, my God. They repaved a federal building by my house, and I wasn't working at the time spent the entire day smoking weed and watching them repave that sh- that little parking lot. It was incredible. One of the best days of my life. Well, what what about it? Do you I just like watching them do it. I like them watching use little machines. I like them. I would like to do it. I would love to do asphalt. That seems like such a fun job. It seems like a lot of just labor, but a lot of fun. You can't do that in Tulsa though, and get your money. No, yeah, I know. I know. I know. One day. One day I'll be able to pour asphalt and stomp it down. Get no one will be able to stomp me. You know, you know the like the hand stompers they got? It's usually that oh, yeah. kind of like the sledgehammer handle, but at mm-hmm. the bottom of it, it's just that big steel like plate. Oh yeah. I watch people use that. I yeah. love that. And oh yeah? You love they're that? Action? Packing, they're throwing it up and they're letting it spin a little bit. <laughs> Put some spin on it. That sounds nice. Yeah, I like it. I like, I like watching it. It looks really nice. Wish I could do it. God, I wish I could do it. But alas, not allowed. I did a show last night, and the guy was leaving and was like, hey, man, you know, nice things I said. And he said, do you have a podcast? I said, yeah, I do. And the guy I was standing next to said, it's called The Fart Locker. And the guy said, oh, The Fart Locker. And he left. And I just want to let you know, if you're listening to this, if you made it this far, guy, at the show last night, please go give us five stars on all the places where you rate podcasts.